Thanks for your support as a channel member, Keith Watson. Boys and girls, we have finally made it to the promised land of the Premier League and we play our first games at this level today after yesterday's transfer special. If you haven't seen that, you should go back and watch that first. Much transfer goodness occurred yesterday. But for today, it is all about the football as we try and get our first points in the Premier League of this year's non league to legend. If that sounds like something you would enjoy, let's make sure we get to 2,000 likes on this video. I know I said yesterday, I'd give it a rest for a little while, or was it the day before? As you can see, I've not changed my shirt for four days because I've recorded these videos back to back. So if we did get to 2,000 or 3,000 likes or whatever it was and the one I asked for, I promise I will stop, but I don't know we did it yet. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 15 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games ever in the Premier League. We're at home to Newcastle and away against Huddersfield. As you can see, the season has already started and we're not yet bottom, which is nice. We're the Monday night game on the telly against Newcastle. And after yesterday's transfer, uh, transfer special, where we did bring in a lot of players who are going to improve this team um, and sold a lot of players who weren't going to get anywhere near this team, um, we have a team for the Newcastle game that looks a lot like the one that finished last season. Um, we are switching to the 4-3-3 system that I talked about throughout the entire transfer special. There is the possibility, if it doesn't really work out, that we'll switch back to a 4-2-3-1. But we haven't really brought in an attacking midfielder who will work in it. So it would involve having to play Beerer in the Premier League. And I don't know that he's ready to make that step up. Whereas someone like Leighton Clarkson, who I kind of pretended didn't exist all summer, but we did spend £3.7 million on him in January. He is only 22. He does have potential to improve. So we might already have the defensive midfielder I thought I needed already at the club. So we're going to start with Clarkson today and see if he can stake a claim for a spot in the team. And we're also starting with Hilson in goal uh, because Woodman has picked up an injury and he's going to miss the first couple of weeks of the season, which has alerted me to the fact that we... Uh, we don't, we don't have any more goalkeepers. We only have those two. So we're going into the first Premier League game with no goalkeeper on the bench. I don't see how that can possibly go wrong. So we're going with Hilson in goal. A back four of Burke, Stevens, Tanganga and Williams with Clarkson at the base of the midfield. Rimanotta and McGeehan um, together ahead of him. And then the new boy Oko Flex coming in means that he can play as an inside forward on the left while Chong plays as an inside forward on the right with Hornby still up front as that pressing forward. Oko Flex could go up there if need be. He could come over here if need be. We've obviously got Tillman, the new left winger that we brought in. Um, we've got Brown who obviously has been a star man on the right wing for a number of years. We have lots of options. We've got Maggior who can play defensive midfield, central midfield. We've got our new defender, Fry. We have lots of options. Brivio is still knocking around. The question is going to be whether any of the options are actually good enough. So if we take what I would consider probably one of our better players, Chong, um, he's a good player for most championship sides. And I think that might be our problem. I think what we've put together here is a very, very, very good championship team. Whether that's enough to stay in the Premier League, I guess we'll find out. Maybe even today. Um, I don't even know what to say. Go out there and impress me. It's probably the best for the first day of the new season. I have put a lot of faith in the players that were already here. Partly because we had quite a limited budget, so we couldn't rebuild the entire squad. Um, and partly because, every not every time, but there were a number of times over the summer where I tried to upgrade a certain position or a certain player. And we just couldn't bring the player in that we wanted because they've gone somewhere else. Because no matter what I do, Barnsley doesn't seem to be a very attractive option for players who have other options available to them. There are even players who went to the championship rather than signing for us, which is a problem. And it's also a problem that we've conceded a goal with the first highlight of the game and we didn't look close to being able to defend it, which is probably even more worrying. It's Barnsley nil, Newcastle won 13 minutes in. That is not the start to life in the Premier League that we were hoping for. <laughs> fingers crossed um, it's just a blip and we're going to get a goal here through Hornby Hornby didn't even get the ball Chong also missing out on the ball there and Williams now plays it back to Tanganga forward to Williams again come on let's at least have an attack here a shot would be lovely Burke with the flick on first look at Oko Flex a lot of a lot of hope for this season is on his shoulders Hornby's in though 
um, and it's straight at the Newcastle keeper. I asked for a shot. We got a shot. That's progress compared to everything else we've seen in the Premier League so far. The other news, if you didn't watch Transfer Special, is I am now the England manager as well. So if this all goes wrong, I'm all right. I'm earning £76,000 a week as England manager. I'm not that bothered what happens with Barnsley in real life. I'm just here for the experience. But I think in real life, I probably dropped Barnsley like a stone the moment England came calling and just went and did that. But, you know... That makes for boring videos. So we've got to keep a club going as well. Hornby, we have another good opportunity straight at the goalkeeper. And this this is going to be the problem with Hornby. We talked about it a lot last year. He will score goals if he gets a lot of chances. He's not going to get a lot of chances at this level. Um, he's had two clear-cut chances already in that first half and hit them both straight at the keeper. And you can't expect a third playing in the Premier League, especially against one of the weaker teams in the shape of Newcastle. So I don't know how much longer Hornby is leading the line when we've got Oco Flex there as a potential alternative as a striker. There's Hornby again. Um, third clear-cut chance of the game for him. Third time the goalkeeper gets his hands to it. It's a problem. Um, so now do we go to the 4-2-3-1 to chase a goal? I guess that's what I need to figure out in my own head. Uh, McGeehan plays the ball over the top for Hornby to chase. He's hit that a little bit too long and Hornby can't get there in time and the keeper collects. Um, I'll tell you what we could do. We could have 10 minutes of passion before I make a substitution. If they score here, there's no point in going more attacking because we've got, we've got goal difference to think of. Oh, I hope we score a goal at some point in the Premier League. Yikes. Um, I remember what happened against Manchester United in the FA Cup. And I think the, the the we came out of that, what was it, a week ago now maybe? The the view coming out of that was we're, it was fun to go on a cup run, but we're obviously not ready for the Premier League yet. And here we are. Um, right, I'm going to stick Oco Flex up front and bring Tillman on on this left-hand side. A complete forward would be quite nice. Not used a complete forward yet this year, I don't think. Um, and then we're also going to take off Rim and Otter because that's what we do. That's a typical substitution. Swap those two over. Get McGeehan as the box. To In fact, do I want to stick Moa up there? I think I do. I think we've got to chase a goal. And I think he's the man to go up there and get in position to try and help us chase it. So we'll put him... Back to what he normally does there. We need to get these in their right positions. Inside forwards all the way. And a complete forward up top. And I think we've got to go attack. And we've got to try and equalise. Uh, home against Newcastle is a game that we've got to pick up points. If we've got any hope of surviving, we have to. We can't be losing to Newcastle at home. And expecting to stay in the Premier League, I don't think. Especially because this is our... This is our match where we're supposed to have the momentum from last year. Oh, my word. What is going on? Tanganga gets away with it a little bit, but that was absolutely insane what was going on at the back there. Not acceptable. Moat now with the corner and Chong heads over and it's the fourth clear-cut chance we've had. We should be ahead in this game. We're just not prolific enough in front of goal. And that's got to change. And I'm hoping having Oco Flex up front will change that. But we've not seen him get a chance yet. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's not like he's a world-class player. He's come out of the championship just like we have. It's going to take him time to adjust. Um, Chong can come off for Brown. Um, we'll get Brown on on this right-hand side and hope that he's got something in him. Let's get creative. We're attacking. We're playing the system that got us promoted. We're creating chances. We just need somebody to convert one. They've had a, have they had a player sent off? No, he was booked. Right, this has got to be the last chance of the game. It's Burke with the free kick. Ball over the top, looking for Oco Flex, but can't quite get past that defender. And now it's actually Newcastle who are in, looking for their second goal. Hilson does make the save. And Williams, can he get a counter-attack going? Lumps it forward, looking for Oco Flex, who wins the header. Brown plays it across to McGeehan. We, are, we were attacking. Mm. there's definite positive signs we had more clear-cut chances than them 
We've just got to be more prolific. Just one change for the Huddersfield game then. Williams comes in at left. So we've now got two Browns and two Williamses. This isn't this isn't going to be a problem, is it? Brandon Williams at left back. Jordan Williams, the one who's been here for ages, at right back. We give the front three of Arco Flex, Hornby and Chong another game to try and show me that they've... Uh, that the answer is going to be amongst them three somewhere before I start mixing things up a little bit. There you go. We want to avenge what happened last time we played Huddersfield. And um, if it becomes apparent that Gagan pressing isn't going to work, we are training a counter-attacking version of the 4-3-3 as well, which I don't want to jump into it too early in the season, just in case the Newcastle game might have just been a blip. We might be about to beat Huddersfield 4-0 um, and Gagan press might work. But if we get five, six, seven games into the season and it starts to become really clear that we can't be Gagan pressing the Premier League, um, then we will have the same formation but as a counter-attacking version of it that we can switch to and just try and counter-attack our way to safety, which isn't a lot of fun, but we did it with Bristol Rovers successfully earlier on in the save. Um, we did a little bit of it with um, Barnsley when we first arrived there. Um, or here so it's not something I'm averse to doing if the situation requires it but obviously I'd rather play super fun attacking football and to be honest even the Newcastle game like I say we played well we created chances a different striker on the pitch or a bit more luck going our way and we beat Newcastle so at the moment I've not seen anything that tells me we can't use the Gagan press in this league but obviously we haven't played Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham, those kind of clubs just yet. So maybe when we play those, we don't go Gagan pressing. We shall see. Um, a draw here I would be very happy with, by the way, uh, because it just gets us a point. And I, I was careful in my wording at the start of the episode. We weren't looking for our first win in the Premier League today. We were looking for our first Premier League point or points. So... If we can come out of this with a point, I'll be happy. Tillman comes on for Rocco Flex. Uh, Moet is on for McGeehan. Um, as you can see, I've added personalised instructions now because we've got players who can play in lots of different roles. Um, it, it was time to add them. I was fed up changing everything. I should have done it last season. Um, but Tillman comes on as an inverted winger because supposedly he's better at that and that might work a little bit better with Hornby and create a little bit more for him. Um, if it doesn't, then... You know, we can switch him to an in, in, inside forward. He can do that just as well. Um, but the inverted winger might just work better with Hornby. And Hornby is in here and Hornby scores. It's his first Premier League goal, I think. I don't know. He might have scored for Everton. He might have played some games before they let him go. But that is his, certainly his first goal for us in the Premier League. His first goal of the season and could end up being an absolutely massive goal. And it's a lovely ball over the top from Leighton Clarkson, who, I mean, like I said earlier in this video... I spent the whole of the summer transfer window talking as if he didn't exist because when he we signed him to play this role in January and then he got injured, so we never really did. And by the time he got fit again, we were using a different system. But we're now back with this system. He's back fit and maybe starting to show what we spent £3.7 million on because it was a huge amount of money for us to spend last year. We don't have another midfielder to bring on to take Rimanotta off, which is... Not ideal. Um, what I will do is take off Chong and bring on Brown. And again, look, automatically switches to winger. Oh, it's it's so simple. See, this is one of those times where I should probably switch to the counter-attacking system. But I'm afraid because I should have done it. I mean, to be fair, a counter-attacking system isn't going to stop them scoring from a corner. It might have stopped them getting the corner in the first place. But it, people do ask it from time to time. So I answer it from time to time. The reason I don't is because, in my experience, whenever I switch to a more defensive system, we end up conceding goals. But obviously, there's your proof that sometimes we don't switch and we concede goals too. So I need to do a proper study on it and work out which is actually better and in what circumstances it's better. But I'm not, I'm not detailed enough to do that kind of study and work out that kind of data. For now, I'll just keep doing it by feel. And by feel... I feel like I shouldn't be counter-attacking when I'm only 1-0 up away from home against a team who ideally we'd like to beat. It's not like we're 1-0 up against Barcelona and we're trying to cling on. Um, I will say we were unlucky. I, th I think we've been unlucky in both of those games, actually. With a little bit more Premier League experience and a little bit more nous under our belts, 
we could have picked up four points today easily, if not six. So we don't look out of our depth, at least not as a team, but it is worrying where we're going to get our goals from. We'll figure that out, hopefully, before the next episode. We'll do... Um, we don't want to get too far ahead on this season. We'll come back probably... I mean, look at that for a run of games. We'll come back bottom of the league, that's for sure. Um, we'll perhaps come back early October because that gets us five games further forward. Um, Tottenham and Arsenal as a double header, both on the telly. I guess we'll come back for that. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.